the probability of success of choosing the best toilet. I'm going to call this P of K. K is when I know when to stop and when I'm going to choose the best toilet after that stopping point. Now the probability function is made up of the sum of two other probabilities. It's the probability that my toilet that I choose, K, is in N position. And then I want to look at the probability that, that now I'm in that position N, what's the probability that I'm actually going to select that toilet? Because remember, we don't always necessarily select the toilet unless it was better than what has come before it. So to clarify, K will be the number toilet that we stop at. So we check all of the toilets up to K, reject them up to K, and it's after that point K that we then start to compare and either reject or accept the toilet. So we might find some quite nice toilets whilst we're moving our way along to K, but we must reject those regardless. It's not until after K that we start to accept or reject the toilet. After K, we then accept the next best toilet that is better than all those that have come before it. It's got to be better than all of them. And once you get to the end, if you, none of them are better than what has come before it, you select the last toilet. So there is a chance that we could have rejected the best toilet in the toilets leading up to K, and therefore we've already gone past it. So let's say we start at toilet zero, we have one and two. I'm going to carry on all my toilets up to K. K is the number that I don't know yet. This is the number I want to reject. All of these toilets will get rejected regardless. From then on, K plus one, K plus two, and so on, all the way up to N. So N is the amount of toilets. These are where I start comparing and decide whether to accept or reject. If we take the case of all of these toilets leading from 0 to k in the first place, then the probability of being in position n is 1 over n. Because there are n toilets in total, if I take any one case, the probability of being in position n is 1 over n. I then want to look at the probability of being selected given that it's now in that position. Well, I've already said that I reject all of these toilets, they're all going, so the probability of it being selected is zero. So for the case when the toilets are leading up to K, you'll see that from our probability function here, we'll always be summing 1 over N times zero, giving us zero every time as we look at these toilets. OK, so let's start taking the toilets after my rejected toilet. So I'm starting with K plus 1. I now start to compare with what has come before it. So if we look at k plus 1, the probability of being in position n is still 1 over n. There are still n toilets, so there's still 1 over n chance. The probability of being selected, given that it's in position n, now if this is the best toilet compared to all those that I've rejected, I'm definitely going to select that toilet and therefore the probability is equal to 1. So k is my ideal stopping point. That is the point where I definitely want to stop. So I would choose the next best toilet and the probability of that happening is definitely going to happen is 1. So if the best toilet did happen to be here, that's great and we have a 100% chance of picking it. OK, but here's where things get tricky. Let's say the best toilet was actually here. But by chance, the toilet in K plus 1 was still better than all the toilets that came before it. So we would have chosen that toilet, and hence we've missed our opportunity, and we hadn't selected the best toilet. So the probability of selecting the best toilet is now no longer 100%. So what is the probability of choosing the best toilet of all of them if it was sitting at K plus 2? So the best way to figure it out was to consider, let's look at the probability of not choosing that toilet. So instead, we'll look at all the toilets that came before it. So for position k plus 2, the probability of being in position n is still the same, so we'll write that down. Now the probability of being selected, given that it's in position n. So this is where I'm going to consider, what about the probability that it's not selected? So therefore, one of these toilets is selected instead. Well, because we've got k plus 1 toilets, and I'm selecting one of them, the probability of that happening is 1 over k plus 1. Now, I want the probability that I select k plus 2. 
So if I one minus the probability of it not being selected, this will give me the probability required. So one minus this value gives me k over k plus one. So the probability of being in position n is k over k plus one. So if I carry on my toilets to k plus three, k plus four, this probability would then choose for k plus three would be k over k plus two. For k plus four, it would be k over k plus three, and so on. So for any value of n, no matter how many toilets I have at the festival, what I need to now find out is the value of k. So when do I stop looking through the toilets and stopping and then committing to the next best toilet? Wow. Who would have thought going to the toilet would be so mathematical? <laughs> so recall that when we looked at all our toilets, zero to k, k being the one where we stopped rejecting, the probability of it being selected given that it was in that position was zero. So any multiplication here means that it resulted in a zero. It was essentially doing one over n times zero plus one over n times zero, all the way up to the kth toilet, which would still be one over n plus zero. So all of these terms will disappear. Let's now start to look at the toilets we are going to then choose, depending on if they are better or worse than the toilets that come before it. For the K plus 1 toilet, recall that the probability of it being in the position was still 1 over n, and the probability of it being selected was 1. For the K plus 2 toilet, it still has a probability of 1 over n, and the probability of being in the position was K over K plus 1. And then we could go all the way up to the nth toilet. It's still the probability of 1 over n multiplied by k over n minus 1. So I need to tidy this up a little bit. So we already know that all of these terms disappear because they're 0. If I start to look at these terms, I can see there's a common factor of 1 over n. And I'm also going to take out a common factor of k. So let's take out k over n. This will leave me with 1 over k plus 1 over k plus 1, plus 1 over k plus 2 would be the next term, and so on, until we add on the last term, 1 over n minus 1. Now this bit here is an approximation for another function, which mathematically people should know. So is it, am I okay to allude to that? Go on. Because going into it, there's no way I'll be able to derive it without us being here for hours. Okay. So is that okay? Okay. You may recognise that the terms within the bracket is an approximation for the function f of x equals 1 over x. So if we think about the graph of the function 1 over x, the terms in our brackets is an approximation of the area under this curve if we think about it in terms of bars like so. So in terms of the area under the graph, we can see that as x here is small, that the approximation is not that accurate. However, as x gets a little bit bigger and it eventually tends to infinity, this approximation becomes more valuable and gives us a truer value to what we require. So I need to work out the area under this graph in relation to my function 1 over x. Well, we can easily do that with a little bit of calculus and integration. Sure, I'll do it on here. Yeah. I could probably fit it in there. Go on, then. So I'm going to integrate my function 1 over x, and I'm going to integrate it between the two values we've been looking at, k, the point where I'm going to stop, and n, the point where we carry on to the last toilet. So integrating this function gives me the natural log of x, and I'm going to look at this between my two limits. Putting in the limits, we get ln of n minus ln of k, which is also ln of n over k. So I take from this that instead of the bracket here, I can replace it with this approximation ln of n over k. We're getting there. So let's replace our long bracket with our approximation that we've just calculated. So now this is still my probability, but it is an approximation. So I'm just going to denote that it's an approximation. OK, 
Okay, so to work out the next bit, to find my value of k, I'm actually just going to simplify the expression. x is going to be k over n. So instead of k, I'm replacing it for x. So this probability function is now in terms of x. k over n becomes x. And I now have the log of 1 over x. So again, using some log laws, this can be rewritten as minus x ln of x. So now that I've got my function, how is this going to help me find my value of k? Well, let's go back to the original toilet problem. If we think about the toilets and whether we accept or reject them, if I forget the rules and let's just say I accept the first toilet that I choose, out of n toilets, what is the likelihood that that is actually the best toilet? It's actually quite small. If you go onto the second toilet and you choose the second toilet that you open, the likelihood of that being the best toilet is a little marginally better, but still small-ish. What happens if we graph this? So if this is k and this is the probability of k, uh, let's say 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, these probabilities will start small, gradually increase until I get to an optimal solution somewhere, and they'll start decreasing again. So I end up with a nice curve. Because the chances are that by the time I get somewhere here, as k gets larger, that I've gone past the best toilet. So the optimal point is at this peak in the curve here. Now we can easily use some calculus to find the peak and to find what this value is with a little bit of differentiation. So if I differentiate my probability function, so we get minus ln of x minus x times 1 over x, which with a little bit of simplification, minus ln of x minus 1. Now in order to find this point here, where the gradient is 0, I set my derivative to 0. We can now rearrange my function to find x. So ln of x equals minus 1, meaning x equals e to the minus 1. I know, I'm not done yet, because this is x, not k. Nearly there, nearly there. So remember, this value of x here is the value of k along my graph along the bottom. It's the point where I'm going to stop, stop rejecting toilets and start comparing all the toilets from then on. This value has a number, it's 1 over e, which is approximately 0 0.368 and so on. We can say that's about 37%. So after 37% of the toilets, we should reject those toilets and move on to the next best one. That's our answer. Nearly. Not only is that our answer, but if we go back to my variable x, which remember was k over n, this is the probability that of those toilets that then come after k, of the one I select, the probability that I've selected the best toilet is also e to the minus 1, or 1 over e, which is again 37%. So not only should I stop rejecting toilets after 37% of toilets, but I will also have a 37% chance of selecting the best toilet out of those left. So if we were in Glastonbury and there were 100 toilets, what we should do is reject the first 37 toilets that we see and then choose the next best toilet after that 37th toilet. And not only that, but we then have a 37% chance that that is the best toilet out of those 100 toilets. So to clarify, we must open the first 37 toilets so we can see what state that toilet is in. So then after the number 37, we can compare the other toilets with what has come before it and start accepting or rejecting. And we accept the first one that is better than all those 37 that come before it. So we've used the example of choosing the best toilet, but this is a famous mathematical problem that you may have seen before in a different context. You may have heard it before called the secretary problem, which is the same process. This time, uh, you want to find the best secretary for the job, but you are going to interview uh, n number of people, so maybe 100 people. 
you can only accept or reject each secretary once they be interviewed. So when do you stop interviewing those secretaries and start accepting one of them, hoping that you have the best for the job? Or another famous use of this is in the dating world. If you want to find the best partner, your soulmate out there, then how many people should you date before you should start accepting and settling down with that next person and hoping that that is the person you're supposed to be with for the rest of your life.